if it had not been for the Lord. Amen. Well, now. It was on my side. Yes, thank you, Lord. Tell me where would I be? Amen. We have to first join the Lord's side if we want to get him on our side. All right. Amen. But thanks be unto God that he has given us the promise and blessed assurance that if we would join his side, that he would be on our side. Amen. Amen. And uh, we are blessed, amen, to have that assurance in our lives. Yes. Amen. Yes. Yes. Uh, that God will see us to the other side. Yes. Amen. Ain't he all right? Yes, yep. he is. Amen. Yes, he will do it. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. Amen. Well, today begins our series of messages. Amen. And our theme song to go with this series of messages this joy that I had. The world didn't give it, and the world can't take it away. Amen. Uh, and as you read more and more in the text, it will become quite clear. Amen. And that Paul had an unquenchable level of joy in his life not based on his circumstances because circumstances change it's up today and down tomorrow in Paul's case he would find himself uh, under house arrest amen it happens and yet and still from beginning to end uh, throughout the pages of the text, we hear him over and over saying that he has joy over one thing or the other, yes. speaking about how he rejoiced in relationship to one thing or the other, how it is that he wants for the church at Philippi to experience like blessings in their lives. That they too would have such joy going on on the inside. You'll see uh, him speak to this uh, theme of how it is that he has experience of joy in his life. And it's no small thing to experience joy in our lives um, because uh, the joy of the Lord is our strength. Amen. And uh, the ability to find joy, not just in good times. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of folk are happy in good times. They're happy because of what's happening around them. Amen. Uh, but the greatest uh, feat in life, the greatest accomplishment in our lives uh, is when we can find joy despite what's going on around us. Uh, when we have difficulties in our lives and things are falling apart and folk uh, are pulling at us and hurdles are being placed in our way and we still can bear a smile. We still have joy in our hearts. That's uh, the ultimate sign uh, of stamp of God's hand resting upon our lives. God says that he'll give us peace that will pass all understanding. And uh, that's what he's describing here. That's what Paul is working with here in the text. Uh, he has that kind of a peace that passes all understanding because a lot of folks would say, uh, this is time to fumble and crumble and complain. Uh, this ain't going right, that ain't going right. Uh, you got to tell it like it is. You got to speak your mind. You got to, you know, get it 
right, this, that, and the other, right? No, he says, I can have joy Amen. in spite of what's going on. Mm -hmm. And so as we take this journey, um, we'll see the joy that Paul experienced, but more than that, what we want to take away and leave here with uh, as we would leave this series of messages um, is how it is that we might apply the principles, the truths, uh, those gems that Paul would share here to the church at Philippi, how we apply that to the church at faith. Amen. How we apply that uh, to our own lives, just simply put your name in the slot. Uh, that's, that's the real takeaway. Uh, not to hear a delightful message or hear uh, a message uh, worded uh, uh, in a good way or hear something that sounds profound or moving or touching. Um, uh, the real meat of the matter is, uh, do we leave here different than when we came? Uh, does, does the word resonate? Does it stick to the bones? Do, does, it, does it travel the highways with us uh, from one day to the next? And so uh, we're going to take this tour of Philippians and we're going to journey together. And as we do, I pray the Lord that, uh, that what God would share and teach us uh, over these next weeks uh, will be influential in our lives. Amen. His relationship that he has with this church is a great relationship. We know that at Corinth, he had to really get on them about a number of different things that were going on there at the church that they needed some guidance in. Uh, but the tone of his letter to these individuals at Philippi expresses the warmth of his love and the depth of his fellowship uh, in the gospel with them as they would share with him, he would share with them. Um, a lot of what he would share is in terms of their giving to missions and how they would support him uh, as he would go forth and share the gospel and, and how they would support him, how he would send individuals to minister unto them and share with them how he is doing and so forth and so on. <coughs> So he opens this book and he shares with them, uh, and, and as he opens the letter to the church at Philippi, notice that he opens it because of this cordial relationship uh, that he shares with them. He does not uh, have to affirm his apostleship uh, as he has done on other occasions with individuals who have looked at him uh, strangely seeing that he had in former days persecuted the church and were not comfortable or sure that he in fact was with them. Um, but not here. Uh, he simply says Paul and Timothy bond servants of Jesus Christ because they already had that kind of a back and forth ongoing fellowship, kindred spirit, if you would. And so he would share with them how it is that they would gladly uh, receive him, uh, bless him, be concerned for his well-being, and how he in turn would be concerned for them also. Uh, he would share his hopes and desires for them uh, very early on, even as he would open up the text. Uh, he would share in that third, that fourth verse 
how on uh, all of his occasions of remembering them, he says, always in every prayer of mine, making requests for you all with joy. It was not a burden for him to think about them or to pray for them, uh, but it was a joy. Uh, it was a joy because uh, the first church in, in the region of Europe, uh, the church of Philippi, was planted by Paul. And uh, he was able to gladly share that um, their fellowship in the gospel began from the first day. And it continued on even up until the point of this writing. He would then move into this sixth verse, which is the basis for today's message. So he would share that he is confident of this very thing, that he who has begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. So he sets the foundation um, and he begins to share in his opening remarks. And as we think about and talk about standing in confidence, just as Paul would share and he would stand in confidence, um, his confidence is based in Christ. Amen. And if we are to have residual joy in our lives, it begins by the affirmation of having this level of confidence in Christ in our lives. In the pages of Something Beautiful for God, Malcolm Muggeridge uh, would speak in regards to Mother Teresa uh, in this way. He said she was blessed with certainties. And what he meant by that was, uh, he said this saintly soul struggling against inconceivable odds was committed to bringing light, hope, and love to the derelicts of India. Why? Because of a growing confidence in God and faith in the presence of Christ. My brothers and sisters, what kept Mother Teresa going is the same that would keep you and I going in our own personal lives. And that is confidence in Christ. If we can establish and maintain a level of personal confidence in Christ, we don't have to worry about giving up. We don't have to worry about uh, being knocked down or pushed around or not being able to stand on our feet. We can proclaim that we're still standing in our lives just because of the confidence that we have in Christ. Confidence goes a long ways. When we have confidence in our lives, it's akin to courage as well. When we have confidence in our lives, uh, yes, uh, we don't think about uh, the failure. We don't think about the possibilities of us not achieving our goals. We think about what it is that we can do, what we can accomplish in our lives. Confidence keeps us from becoming paralyzed by our personal inadequacies or our fears of what may be. So many times in our lives, uh, we become captivated by our fears of what may happen until we never move forward in all that we can make happen. Mm. All that we can experience in our lives, the joy that God has for us is consumed and dissipated because of the fear that we let consume us. It's a good thing when we find confidence in God. Amen. Yes, Lord. That confidence allows us to 
say, yes, I can. Yeah. It's confidence that allows us to say, I can do it. I can achieve it. I can become it. Confidence can make the difference in our lives versus us running in retreat, uh, running and hiding from our own shadows. When we have a level of confidence in our lives, we can be encouraged. So he would share with us that if we are to remain standing in our lives, we have to have confidence in Christ. Confidence in Christ. Um, Philippians, more than any of Paul's other epistles, uh, reveals insight into Paul's personal situation, commitments, and background. Um, as he would share in this letter, Paul spoke very candidly to his strongest supporters. He explained the situation at Rome and how his imprisonment caused mixed reactions in the church. Um, he thanked those who were financial supporters of his, uh, those who gave prayer support to him. Um, he would share his thoughts and actions of what his intents and desires to do in terms of sending others to uh, be with them and to share with them, and even asking them to pray for those who were assisting and aiding him in the carrying of the gospel. He was very open in this letter as he was shared. And it's, it's because of his openness as he was shared that we would see him exude with such confidence, such encouragement in his life. And we would see uh, the radiance of joy just shining through him, even though he was under house arrest at this time. And so we thank God for him sharing with such clarity and openness and transparency, and transparency in his life. And he would share that Christ, con con having confidence in Christ, is what gives him that. Uh, as he would say and speak in regards to being confident, it's, it's him saying, since I am confident, all of these other things can happen. All that he projects uh, to come to pass is based on his level of confidence. That's why I emphasize it here today. It's because it's based on his level of confidence in Christ uh, that he is able to see down the road. Listen. Paul clearly believed his life had been transformed radically because of him following Christ. So every portion of this letter reveals the Lord through him. You remember Job, don't you? Yes. Mm -hmm. That confidence that he had in his life. He would courageously and boldly share in 13 and 15, though he slayed me, yet will I trust him. It was through his rough patch in life, his hard and difficult days and dark nights that he was able to share this bold declaration of confidence. And that's what God is trying to get at in your life and in my life. God wants us to have confidence not only when the cupboard is full, but even when we're down to our last. Confidence will give us the fortitude to remain standing. 
He says, he who has. He, he points us in the direction of his confidence. He says, he who has. He's speaking of Christ. He's speaking of the Lord's work in his life. He said, he who has. Don't get it confused or twisted with any other individual part of the Sanhedrin, but that's not the answer. Jew of Jew, that's not the answer. Educated, that's not the answer. Yes, yes. Speak multiple languages, but that's not the answer. Huh. But he who has, yes, yes. he would point us in the direction of Christ that his confidence lies in the Lord. And if you want to be able to stand, no matter what wind blows in your life, no matter what waves would beat upon your shore, find confidence in Christ. It says, he who has begun a good work in you. We know and we've shared that this is the first church that was founded in Philippi by Paul. Certainly God has begun a good work in them. Yes, uh, he made a start, a beginning with them. Uh, and so as he has done in their lives, if we would pause long enough to look back over our own lives, no matter what we've experienced along the way, we would have to admit if we are believers in God, that he has also begun a good work in you and I. All that God does is good. And I know that Many of us said, hold on, Pastor, wait a minute. Have you watched the news lately? I, I know you, you've had to hear about the shootings. I, I, I know you've had to hear about the riot. I, I know you had to hear about the disappointments. Uh, I, I know that you had to hear about the children who didn't have food to eat. I, I know that you had to hear, and yes, I have. And I still will share with you today, I can stand and say in confidence that what God does, he does well. What we experience in, our, in terms of our disappointments in life, our despairs and discouragement that we face along the way. That's not God's doing. Yes, uh, that is a result of the fall. That's a result of man deciding that he knew more than God. And when we decide that we want to choose our own destiny and go in our own way, Yes, we'll find ourselves faced with disappointments too along the way. And even as Paul finds himself incarcerated under house arrest, even as Paul would find himself being shipwrecked at moments in his life, being whipped and beaten in his life, even as Paul, he didn't have a, a life that was full of rose gardens. Uh, he had some difficult days also. But yet he still had joy because all that God does, God does well. Mm. God produces good in our lives. Yeah. And you don't have to really look far. Just go back to Genesis 1 and look how God took nothing and made something. Look yeah. at how yeah. God created all that exists in the world and gave chaos, turned chaos into order. How he turned darkness into light. Look at how God would create the animals. Look at how God would create the birds of the air and the, and the fish in the sea. God create all things well. And after he would create, he would say, and it was good. 
He would create another and he would say, it is good. He continued on down the line and as he would create man in his own image and woman out of his ribs, God would say, and it is very good. All that God does is good. And so he could base his confidence in Christ knowing that God is a good God. Yes, he is. And even when Adam decided to act in disobedience and act out, God would show up in Genesis 3 and 15 with a rescue plan. Can I get a witness? Yes. And he would share with him how man would have a redemption story. When despair and trouble come, the Christian must have the courage to exercise his faith on the evidence of what God has done in the past. Jesus would share with some, if you don't believe for my word's sake, then believe for what you've seen me do. Mm -hmm. I'm not just all talk. All right. I'm talk and action combined together. And if you want to see the fruit of my words, if you want to see the results of what I've said, you just look around you. He said, let there be light. And morning after morning, we see the sun rise. He says, look at the fruit that I produce. Look at the orderliness of what God has created. He allows the world to orbit around. Gives us what we have deemed and dubbed gravity. That would prevent it from just wobbling out of control. What God does, he does well. Being confident of this very thing. That he who has begun a good work. It says, this work that he has done, he has done it in you. Our concern is not whether or not God is good, but rather our concern ought be, will man mess up what God has made? And so he would point them to have confidence in God. If we put our trust in man, we're in trouble. But it's only when we place our confidence in God that we can remain standing in life. No matter what we face, no matter what comes our way. It's, it's just knowing. It's just knowing that God is right there by our side that makes us exude with confidence. When I was a young boy growing up, yes, and the world was a scary place at times. It was the confidence of knowing that Daddy was there. Mm. That allowed me to be overwhelmed with confidence. Because as long as daddy had my hand, as long as daddy was with me, it would be all right. So it is, my brothers and sisters, when we have the confidence in Christ that God would never leave us nor forsake us. That he'll be right there by our side. We too can have that same boldness that Paul would write about we too can have that same joy that would fill his heart. The reason why we can have such great confidence in God is because what he says next. He talks about how God works in you. 
But then he goes on and he talks about how God will take those good works and he will complete it. You're not leaving a job undone. He will see you through to the end. God will complete. God will make it perfect, perfect in our lives. Listen, by now you already know that Paul's circumstances were anything but joyful. By now you already know that he has been illegally arrested and taken to Rome. Yeah. By now you already know that he is awaiting trial. His life was anything but joyful from man's perspective. From the outsider looking in on his life. There were divisions of individuals about his circumstances. So in terms of what was happening to him. And so it would cause us to ask, how is it that he could have such joy in his life in the midst of circumstances that were uncomfortable? I tell you, it's because he had confidence in Christ. Mm -hmm. So as you take inventory of your own life and as you look at stuff that's falling apart and bursting at the seams, as you look at stuff that's less than joyful in your life, and you're saying, Pastor, how can I have joy with what I'm dealing with? My son's not doing well in school. My daughter's acting out. How, how can I have joy? Parents are going through sicknesses. I just lost a loved one. How can I have joy? I'm glad you asked. It's right here in the text. What God has started in you, God will complete it. That's why you can keep working at it. That's why you can keep chugging along. That's why you can keep going through your routine is because you know that God is going to finish what he started. As a matter of fact, when we think of Christ, we think of him as the author and finisher of our faith. Because that's who he is. He does not just simply send us out, yes, with, with no sense of protection or comfort or confidence in our lives. He sends us out with the joy of knowing that in the end, this is how your story will end. It, it, it's when your favorite team is messing up at the start of the game, missing free throws, easy layups, missing three-point shots but you recorded the game <laughs> and so even though you have not yet seen the game and you're watching it for the first time and you're seeing all of these errors and mistakes and, and, and it's nerve-wracking yeah, yeah. but you know how the game's going God has already showed us. He's already demonstrated how the game is going in. That's why we can have confidence and we can move forward in our lives no matter what we face in life. We don't have to act like everything is a crisis in our lives when we know that God's got us. I mean, if Paul had been double-minded, he would have complained because life was so uncomfortable for him. 
things were not going the way they ought to for somebody who is a child of the king, somebody who is a king's kid. Uh, but he had confidence in Christ. And it's this confidence, this level of confidence that he had in Christ uh, that would allow him to know that God would complete what he started. And God would keep on completing it. Look, look at the text. He says, in that sixth verse, he says, um, who has begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. Until Christ returns. God gives us a lasting impact of confidence in our lives. When we would have confidence in Christ, it's not some fly by night. It's not some hocus pocus, genie in a bottle type of a thing. No, confidence in Christ is more than that. This word that he would share, he says, until the day term that is oftentimes used in reference to that day when Christ will return from heaven to receive his bride unto himself. And so when you ask unto what day? How long will the Lord be with me? How long will the Lord fight for me? How long will the Lord stand by my side? How long will the Lord be the lifter up of my head? How until the day when Christ returns. Until that day when the trumpet will sound. Until that day when the Lord will allow the dead in Christ to rise first. And then we who are alive and remain will be caught out to meet him in there. Until that day. The Lord will be right there by our side. He says, because confidence exudes over my life. He says, I look out. Look at verse 14. He says, I look out and I look around. And I see most of the brethren in the Lord having become confident by my chains. I'm much more bold to speak the word without fear. See, confidence, we get confidence. When you have confidence in Christ, others around you will find confidence in Christ as well, that they too can be bold. If, if you're in a pack with nothing but cowards and individuals who are shaking like a leaf on a tree, Yes, everybody in the pack, uh, yes, are running for their lives. When you have confidence, those who were shaking like a leaf will find a little confidence of their own. I gotta sit down now. Uh, but I'm gonna leave you with this. I, when we were when we were coming up as kids, we were Coming up, we went to choir rehearsal. Choir rehearsal was around the corner from my auntie's house. And when daddy didn't pick us up from choir rehearsal at church, we were supposed to walk around the corner to auntie's house and wait for him there until he picked us up. And so on one occasion, uh, I wasn't wearing the white Close on the way to Auntie's house. Yes, uh, and and one of the uh, gangs in the neighborhood would see us walking down the street, and they began to run in our direction. And it was about four or five of us, uh, my brothers and my cousin, and we would start running until suddenly we would look behind us and notice that 
one of my brothers was not running with us. Because he had confidence, we decided, because we knew what daddy would do and we left him, that we would man up and we would go back to get him because we all had to go to auntie's house together. All right. We would go back. All because he decided that he was going to have some courage and some confidence and he wasn't running. And so we went back and we stood with him and we all stood together because one of us had confidence. And that's what happens uh, when you have confidence in life. There will be others who will stand with you. All right. That's what he's describing in that 14th verse when he talks about those who would look at him in his chains and as they would look at him and see his courage and confidence he had in Christ, they said, I have to stand. If this man can go to jail, if this man can be shipwrecked and beaten, if this man can be left for dead and he's still standing on the wall. All right, all right. And I got to stand and declare what I know about Jesus Christ, that he is King of King and Lord of Lords. I've got to also stand up and declare that Jesus is a way maker. I've got to stand up and declare that Jesus is able. I've got to declare that Jesus is a friend of mine. Can I get a witness? Yes, uh, my brothers and sisters, uh, we've got to stand in confidence. We are to make a difference and an impact in the world in which we live. And so I want to invite you right where you are. I want you to receive the courage and the confidence that exists in Christ Jesus. And so I want to invite you as we stand on our feet. As the doors of the church are open, I want to invite you to receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior in your own life. Come to Jesus.